Now, there's something else that doesn't get talked about in the college affordability debate. Yes, it needs to be more affordable in this country to go to college. It also needs to be more affordable in this country to not go to college. This one's very personal for me. I started out this year dealing with the terminal illness of my father. I make decisions for a living, and nothing could have prepared me for the kind of decisions our family faced. But the thing we had going for us was that we never had to make those decisions based on whether it was going to bankrupt our family because of Medicare. And I want every right, family to have that same freedom to do what is medically right, not live in financial you. Your time is complete, that. Now, our party doesn't talk about that as much, largely for a very good reason, which was we are committed to the separation of church and state, and we stand for people of any religion and people of no religion. But we should call out hypocrisy when we see it. And for a party that associates itself with Christianity, to say that it is okay to suggest that God would smile on the division of families at the hands of federal agents, that God would condone putting children in cages, has lost all claim to ever use religious language again. Vice President, I And I am determined to bring about a day when a white person driving a vehicle and a black person driving a vehicle, when they see a police officer approaching, feels the exact same yeah. thing, a feeling not of fear, but of safety. I'm determined That's to bring time. that day about. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Nothing about politics is theoretical for me. I've had the experience of writing a letter to my family, putting it in an envelope marked just in case, and leaving it where they would know where to find it in case I didn't come back from Afghanistan. I have the experience of being in a marriage that exists by the grace of a single vote on the U.S. Supreme Court. And I have the experience of guiding a community where the per capita income was below $20,000 when I took office into a brighter future. I'm running because the decisions we make in the next three or four years are going to decide how the next 30 or 40 go. And when I get to the current age of the current president in the year 2055, I want to be able to look back on these years and say my generation delivered climate solutions, racial equality, and an end to endless war. Help me deliver that new generation to Washington before it's too late. Thank you. Happy debate day. We are excited Woo! to be here. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> hey, we are excited to be here in Houston and it's debate day. The American people are divided and doubtful at the very moment we need to rise to some of the greatest challenges we've ever seen. Imagine what would be possible right now with ideas that are bold enough to meet the challenges of our time, but big enough as well that they could unify the American people. That's what presidential leadership can do. That's what the presidency is for. I propose Medicare for all who want it. We take a version of Medicare, we make it available for the American people, and if we're right as progressives that that public alternative is better, then the American people will figure that out for themselves. I trust the American people to make the right choice for them. Why don't you? To make sure that we're not only dealing with things like the over-incarceration of black Americans, but also black solutions, entrepreneurship, raising to 25% the target for the federal government to do business with minority-owned businesses, investing in HBCUs that are training and educating the next generation of entrepreneurs. We can and must do that. When I am president, an authorization for the use of military force will have a built-in three-year sunset. Congress will be required to vote, and a president will require, be required to go to Congress to seek an authorization. Because if our troops can summon the courage to go overseas, the least our members of Congress should be able to do is summon the courage to take a vote on whether they ought to be there. We have to support and compensate the teaching profession, respect teachers the way we do soldiers, and pay them more like the way we do doctors. The only people, though, who actually buy into this president's hateful rhetoric around immigrants are people who don't know any. We have got to put an end to endless war. I remember President Trump scoffed and said he'd like to see me making a deal with Xi Jinping. I'd like to see him making a deal with Xi Jinping. Good politics is supposed to be not about the day-to-day -day fights of the politicians, but about the day-to-day -day lives of Americans. At a certain point, when it came to professional setbacks, I had to wonder whether just acknowledging who I was was going to be the ultimate career-ending professional setback. <clears throat> I came back from the deployment and realized that 
You only get to live one life, and I was not interested in not knowing what it was like to be in love any longer. So I just came out. We have to know what we are about. And this election is not about any of us up here. It is not about this president, even though it's hard to talk of anything else some days. It's about the people who trust us with their lives. And if we hold to that, then it doesn't matter what happens to each of us professionally. Together, we will win a better era for our country. South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Everyone on this stage, by definition, is competing to be a president for after the Trump presidency. Really think about where we'll be. Vulnerable. Even more torn apart by politics than we are right now. And these big issues, from the economy to climate change, have not taken a vacation during the impeachment process. Your signature, Senator, is to have a plan for everything, except this. No plan has been laid out to explain how a multi-trillion dollar hole in this Medicare for All plan that Senator Warren is putting forward is supposed to get filled in. But the way to do it without a giant multi-trillion dollar hole and without uh, having to avoid a yes or no question is Medicare for all who want it. I don't think the American people are wrong when they say that what they want is a choice. The slaughter going on in Syria is not a consequence of American presence. It's a consequence of a withdrawal and a betrayal by this president of American allies and American values. Part of what makes it possible for the United States to get people to put their lives on the line to back us up is the idea that we will back them up too. You take away the Thank honor you. of our soldiers, you might as well go after their body armor next. This president has betrayed American values. Our credibility is in tattered. I will restore U.S. credibility before Sir. it is finally too late. You just made it clear that you don't know how this is actually going to take weapons off the streets. If you can develop the plan further, I think we can have a debate about it, but we can't wait. People are dying in the streets right now. We can't wait for universal background checks that we finally have a shot to actually get through. We can't wait to ban the sale of new weapons and high capacity magazines so we don't wind up with millions more of these things on the street. We cannot wait for purity tests. We have to just get something done. Everyone on this stage recognizes, or at least I thought we did, that the problem is not other Democrats who don't agree with your particular idea of how to handle this. The problem is the National Rifle Association and their enablers in Congress, and we should be united in taking the fight for them. Think about what the president can do to unify a new American majority for some of the boldest things we've attempted in my lifetime. Yet there are some here on this stage who say it doesn't count unless we go even further. Free college for low and middle income students isn't good enough unless we're also paying for the children of billionaires. Immigration reform isn't enough unless we also decriminalize border crossings. We have an opportunity to do the biggest you, things Mayor. we've done in my lifetime. Sir. And I think we have a crisis of belonging in this country that is helping to explain so many of our problems. I believe only the president can build a sense of belonging and purpose for the entire country. The purpose of the presidency is not the glorification of the president. It is the unification of the American people. And I'm asking for your vote to be that president when the dust clears over the rubble of our norms and institutions at the end of the Trump presidency. Pick up the pieces and guide us toward a better future. constitutional process of impeachment should be beyond politics, and it is not a part of the campaign, but the president's conduct is. The impeachable conduct that we have seen in the abuse of power that we're learning more about in the investigations, but 
Just to be clear, the president's already confessed to it on television. We are absolutely going to confront this president for his wrongdoing, but we are also each running to be the president who will lead this country after the Trump presidency comes to an end, one way or the other. And we are going to have to unify a nation that will be as divided as ever, and while doing it, address big issues that didn't take a vacation for the impeachment process or for the Trump presidency as a whole. The reason I insist on Medicare for all who want it as the strategy to deliver on that goal we share of universal health care is that that is something that, as a governing strategy, we can unify the American people around, creating a version of Medicare, making it available to anybody who wants it, but without the divisive step of ordering people onto it, whether they want to or not. And I believe that commanding people to accept that option, whether we wait three years as Senator Warren has proposed or whether you do it right out of the gate, is not the right approach to unify the American people around a very, very big transformation that we now have an opportunity to deliver. I have the right experience to take on Donald Trump. I get that it's not traditional establishment Washington experience, but I would argue we need something very different right now. In order to de defeat this president, we need somebody who can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, who actually comes from the kinds of communities that he's been appealing to. I don't talk a big game about uh, helping the working class while helicoptering between golf courses with my name on them. I don't even golf. I also wore the uniform of this country and know what is at stake in the decisions that are made in the Oval Office in the Situation Room. And I know how to bring people together to get things done. I know that from the perspective of Washington, what goes on in my city might look small, but frankly, where we live, the infighting on Capitol Hill is what looks small. The usual way of doing business in Washington is what looks small. We shouldn't have to pay farmers to take the edge off of a trade war that shouldn't have been started in the first place. I don't think this president cares one bit about farmers. He keeps asking them to take one for the team, but more and more I'm talking to people in rural America who see that they're not going to benefit from business as usual under this president. I believe that so many of the solutions lie with American farmers, but we have to stand up for them. American farming should be one of the key pillars of how we combat climate change. As mayor of a city that is racially diverse and largely low income. For eight years, I have lived and breathed the successes and struggles of a community where far too many people live with the consequences of racial inequity that has built up over centuries but been compounded by policies and decisions from within living memory. And I care about this because while I do not have the experience of ever having been discriminated against because of the color of my skin, I do have the experience of sometimes feeling like a stranger in my own country, turning on the news and seeing my own rights come up for debate, and seeing my rights expanded by a coalition of people like me and people not at all like me, working side by side, shoulder to shoulder, making it possible for me to be standing here wearing this wedding ring in a way that couldn't have happened two elections ago, lets me know just how deep my obligation is to help those whose rights are on the line every day, even if they are nothing like me in their experience. I'm not only running to defeat Donald Trump, I am running to prepare for the day that begins when Donald Trump has left office, to launch the era that must come after Trump. I want you to know that everybody is welcome in this movement that we're building, and everybody is welcome in this future that we must create. NewsHour Politico Democratic Presidential Debate, and let's begin. This is beyond public opinion. This is beyond polls. This is beyond politics. The president left the House with no choice. No matter what happens in the Senate, it is up to us in 2020. This is our chance to refuse to be taken in by the helplessness, to refuse and reject the cynicism. That is what this presidential election is about. It is what my campaign is about. Our opportunity in 2020, no matter what happens in Washington, as a country, to change this nation for the better. We've got to talk about poverty in this country. There is not one county in the United States of America where someone working full time at the minimum wage 
can afford a two-bedroom apartment. In most places, not even a one-bedroom apartment. The biggest problem in our economy is simple. People are not getting paid enough. That is not the result of some mysterious cosmic force. It's the result of bad policy, and we've got to change it by raising wages and empowering workers. Well, I propose that we make college free for 80% of Americans, but it doesn't have to be free for the top. If you're in that top 10%, how about you pay your own tuition and we save those dollars for something else that we could spend them on that would make a big difference, whether it's infrastructure, childcare, housing, health. On issue after issue, we've got to break out of the Washington mindset that measures the bigness of an idea by how many trillions of dollars it adds to the budget, or the boldness of an idea by how many fellow Americans it can antagonize. We're in the fight of our lives right now. This is our chance. This is our only chance to defeat Donald Trump. And we shouldn't try to do it with one hand tied behind our back. The way we're going to win is to bring everybody to our side in this fight. I'm not going to turn away anyone who wants to help us defeat Donald Trump. We need Democrats who've been with us all along, yes, but we also need independents worried about the direction of the country. If you were a Republican, disgusted with what's going on in your own party, we're not going to agree on everything, but we need you in this fight, and I will welcome you to our side. I think all of us want the same thing at the end of the day. We know what a gift it would be to the future and to the country for literally anybody up here to become president of the United States compared to what we've got. The world needs America right now, but it can't be just any America. It has to be one that is actually living up to the values that make us who we are. Supporting peace, supporting democracy, supporting human rights, and supporting stability around the world. I am asking you to join me, to vote for me, to caucus for me, and to help us build that future defined not by exclusion, but by belonging.